Thank you for joining the Alumni Talk. We're back. Uh, we're here with a special guest, Kenny Satterfield, played at the University of Cincinnati. Before we get into the interview, I want to uh, welcome everybody to um, the Alumni Basketball League. I'm Ricky Gorn, the director of team operations. And we'll be bringing you some games in 2023. The league is owned by Jake Jackson and ex-NBA player Kareem Rush. You can follow us on YouTube, uh, at the ABL, Twitter, at the ABL USA, and on Instagram, at ABL Balling, and also our website, uh, www.ablballing.com. You can catch this podcast on YouTube, as well as um, Apple Podcasts. So to bring back our guest, former NBA player, Cincinnati legend, Kenny Satterfield. It's good to have you here. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me. That's good to hear. Um, so let's kind of dig into it, man. So what, what started you off um, playing uh, basketball? Uh, just my neighborhood. Just my neighborhood where I grew up at. Um, it was just a lot like, you know, once I came on my building, it was a basketball court and people always was playing and just different sports. So just my neighborhood, just being active in the neighborhood. So who did you, you're from New York. So like talk about some of the guys from New York um, that inspired you um, to start playing the game. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm like, I'm pretty sure like how you, you know what I mean? From where you guys are from, like y'all get like certain areas where a lot of guys just come from. Um, like my neck of the woods is like that from my area in the Bronx. Like we, a lot of guys from my area, uh, just, you know, fortunate enough to make it far in basketball. Um, we take it to like older names, like guys like Billy Singleton, uh, Brian Reese, uh, you know, Ray Rivera, um, my man, Isaiah that played at LIU, um, you know, Reggie Freeman, Terrence Rencher, like, you know, it just Andre Barrett, Kimball Walker, Corey Fisher, like Eggers, like it's just a lot of a lot of a lot of like, you know, our neighborhood just has a certain we fortunate enough to have a lot of good ball players come out the ne- our neck of the woods and some make it, some don't. You know how that go. So what what part of what part of New York are you actually actually from? I'm from the Bronx. I'm from the, the Castle Hill Soundview area. Okay, okay. So, um, did you play AAU when you were younger, and what was that AAU experience like in in New York? Um, it. I mean, as, as these people know it now, it, it is. It was completely different. Like you know, even for me, like starting up, like in in New York back then, it was Riverside, Gauchos, maybe like one or two other programs that had like you know that traveled nationally and and had a name. You know, like you know, going to these tournaments. But for most of the guys, I would say, like, from my my era, uh, even, you know, way before me, it was you kind of had to do, do your thing in the neighborhood first to get to Riverside of Gauchos. So um, I grew up playing in the Castle Hill Community Center. Then I ended up going down the street to Kids Bay Boys and Girls Club. And from there, I ended up playing with Riverside for a while. And then my AAU coach from Kibbs Bay was, was we was lucky enough. Um, a guy named Gary De Caesar, he was uh, real big with um Adidas basketball. He was the coach at St. Raymond's High School. I think Gary's still coaching. Um, I think he's coaching a high school in Chicago. But um, he was real big with Sonny and everything, and we had our own little Adidas program, like uh, we was called the New York Ravens or whatever. And I left Riverside my last year and, and just stuck with my neighborhood team, which ended up being the, the New York Ravens. Who would you consider like your rival while you was coming up? <laughs> it, it, it's funny because you know it depends on like you know what you talk about in, in AAU. Yeah, so like when you was young, let's talk. We haven't got to high, high school or college yet. Like when you were young, like who was it that you wanted to see? Like whose name made you say, you know what? I'm, I'm I know I'm better than him. We got, but we're gonna figure it out on the basketball court. Oh shit! Um. I never, I like, I never really, like, I never really looked at it that way. Like, I never mm-hmm. took somebody, like, somebody else was saying that he better than me or he the best, and I'm going to, like, I'm going to prove it. Like, if they were saying it like that, and it was more to me, like, all right, I'm going to give everything I got. I'm We're going to fucking see. 
You know what I mean? Like, we're going to see. Like, I don't know where I'm at, but we're going to see. And that was, like, even when I first started. Like, I'll play against older guys, and just because they're bigger than me, like, let's see if he's really that big. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to see. And that's the way I took it. But when we got into that AAU world, um, a rival for me, I don't know, because we, we was playing so many people. Like, you know, I would say, like, if we had to go, like, in New York, it would be, like, Rice versus uh, St. Raymond's, uh, Rice versus Christ the King and things like that. And that was, like, uh, Omar Cook. Um, Omar Cook was at Christ the King. Um, Majestic Map was at St. Raymond's. And that was, like, our big rival because we was, like, in the same, like, division in our um, in our conference. So you get the – you went to Rice, so – um, talk about your experience in high school and what was, what was it like, you know, being one of the better players in the city and, you know, what was that experience like for you? Um, it, 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 it wasn't, I kind of, I enjoyed it a lot because it wasn't like, uh, like how it kind of be with these kids now where, you know, somebody is telling me from the beginning that I'm going to be this at the end. Um, a lot of things that happened for me was my, like, like, personally it was like my self belief, like me believing in myself. As you say, like like who was my rivals? I didn't really look at nobody like no rivals. If somebody told me that that person was that it, like I like I'm not taking a playoff. So we're gonna find out if he really is it. And if he is, I'm gonna respect it because I know how hard I play. So what I mean how, did, how many did you win some state championships? Like what was your best run in high school? We won we won two state championships. Um wow. We was like we we finished my senior year like number two in the country. Um, we always was a nationally ranked team every year. I played like on the varsity level. Uh, my last year, like we only lost one game. We lost to St. Raymond's at Gaucho's Gym. I kind of still, even at this point in my life, still blame myself for our unperfect season. Um, but I played. With, I was I was lucky, man. I played with a lot of really good players, even like. Like coming into high school, before I got to high school, like uh, in high school I played with Andre Barrett, Kevin Bell, um, Cal Cuff, uh, Andre Sweet, Jason Osborne. Like we had like we had maybe eight non Division One players on that one team. Wow, yeah. and it's hard to think about that now because a lot of times kids, a Division One player is not going to wait their turn. They and, don't want and, to go to another school. And even like now, if you got eight division one players and non division one players on one team, that's more like, you know, everybody kinda like transferred into that school. Yep. So like that's why even when I tell my son, like it was really special because we had eight, nine, ten division one players, like my sophomore year, if we add up everybody from that was seniors to that was just on the team, it was twelve division one players. And then just wow. saying my senior year, like after I graduated and the guys that went after me, it was it was eight of us from the junior to the senior class. So like now you gotta be at one of these prep schools for that stuff to happen every year like that. Well, I mean that's so that's, that's awesome. yeah, so I tell people I'm like, you know, the best thing for me was being in that kind of environment and it wasn't like we were put together in that environment. We all lived in the area to be traveling to school. Nobody was in no host family uh, two and a half hours away from the school. Like we all around the same area. You got to get on the train or you live here, live there. But the practice was the best thing for me. No, I mean, a lot of times you find environments like that. Practice can be tougher than the games. Let me ask you, you so your senior year comes, now you're looking at your recruiting. Um, so what did your recruiting look like? Who were your top three or five schools? And how did you eventually come to the conclusion that Cincinnati was the best fit for you? Um, I was looking at, uh, I was, UConn was going to be my choice. It was UConn, NC State, Pittsburgh, Clemson, uh, Seton Hall with Tommy Amica. He had just took over the job. I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a DC guy. Yeah. And um, I was pretty keeping it close like that. I didn't even have Cincy in my, in my like, you know, they had tried to 
Coach Hugs had tried to recruit me after ABCD camp. Um, but I, I wasn't really kind of interested, like, for some, like, some personal issues. Like, my dad lived in Ohio, and me and him, like, you know, we don't, we don't see, like, whatever. And I didn't want to feel like I was going to Cincinnati, like, to be trying to, like, you know, looking for that relationship. So I didn't want to make, you know what I mean? So I was like, I just took them all the way out the picture, like, nah, I'm good. And it's a weird situation how I came back to play. I was lucky enough to go on this trip. Um, rest in peace, uh, rest in peace to uh, Brett Barrett. He he had put together like this travel team, and we went to France. And I was playing with um, Donald Little, Mike Miller, Jonathan Bender, uh, Rodney White, um, Brett Nelson. <laughs> uh, what's my boy name? Matt Bonner. Like, like we had a we had a real really good crew, and um, Mike Miller. And Donald Little, like, when we finished the trip, they were going right to college. And when we finished the trip, most of the guys on the team, like, we were about to go start our senior year. So when we was on that trip, you know, I really liked Donald Little a lot. Like, he was just a real cool dude. And he just started talking to me about Cincinnati. And he just started, like, you know, the old man coach was telling me, like, you ain't want to mess with us, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I like this dude, though. He's funny. He's cool. He, and I want to play with a big like this. And next thing you know, like the guy that brought me on a trip, he get me on the phone with hugs. Next thing I know, he's real co- you know, close with hugs. And he get me on the phone with hugs, and we start talking every day, every day. And by the time I left that trip, I was going to Cincinnati. You, you had a loaded mob with, um, what are you talking about? You, DJ, Steve Logan, Kenya Martin. I mean, <laughs> it, y'all it, never- look, people, people, I love, like, me, DJ, Kenyon Martin, Steve Logan, like, you know, those are a lot of guys, like, you know, made the lead or, like, you know, got player of the year, things like that. But people forget about, like, Pete Michael, Jermaine Tate, whose son is playing with the Houston Rockets, with Kenyon's son, which is crazy. Uh, Ryan Fletcher, like, we, like Leonard Stokes. Like, we, we were really, really Donald Little. Like, we were deep. Like, we was, we was a really, really deep team at every position. I mean, you, you guys were, I, mean, I remember, I was young, but I remember seeing you guys, man, I was like, wow, like, you guys were, I mean, you guys were really getting to it. I mean, you guys were, I think Kenya got hurt, right? And you guys were, you guys were ready to win it all. Yeah, we, 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 it kind of, like, when I got to Cincinnati, it kind of felt like my high school environment, because every position you had to, like, kind of, like, you couldn't take a playoff, like kind of how I said with so many Division One players on the same team and the way our coach coached us. It was kind of similar to hugs. Like, if you ain't bringing it, you ain't playing. I don't care who the fuck you are. <laughs> so, like, if you seeing hugs, curse Kenyon Martin now, he's about to be national player of the year. Like, you better get your ass on the line and, 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 and go. <laughs> no question. So, we, I, I was just, that was one of the things I even tell my kids, like, you know, and my kids, my, you know, my son and my daughter, like, the environment that I was able to come up in, it was always, I don't know why I was that fortunate, but it was always one of those environments where it was like, it's a lot of talent in here and nobody got to tell me that. I could see it myself. So I can always measure myself where I'm at, just around the people I'm around. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's like, you know, it's the mental, like the mental, um, strength you have to have and toughness you have to have to play with a coach like that. Um, a lot of these kids don't understand. Um, and, you know, you, you can speak to that better than most. You know, you have a coach who's willing to cuss out the national player of the year. I mean, yes. nobody, nobody's above that. But let me ask you this, though. Get into um, the rivalry between Cincinnati and Xavier. How much, how, how, like, how, how much did you guys get up for that game? Like, um, you know, how much of you guys like, all right, we got to beat these guys. And what was your record against Xavier doing this? <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I'll I I'll get to the record part first. I might be one of the only guys with this record versus some dudes. Um, you, you don't realize it until after you play in it. Like, you really don't realize, like, how big it is until after you play in that game. So if you're lucky enough to get that first win, 
you know you can't lose that game again. And if you don't get a win, you starving for that game again. Like it, it's 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 hard to walk around the city after that game. Uh, it, it take a minute whether you win or lose that game. It take a minute. It take a minute. Like it's it's one of the biggest games in the country. And you no, know, I'm I, like none of I didn't go to Duke. I didn't go to North Carolina. But as we all watch those games on TV and we can feel that tent, like, you know, that 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 environment on the television with with the crowd and the atmosphere. I tell you, it, it is no different. It is no different. And it might be even like we might even be closer. So it might be even more. Man, just, to me, in terms of intensity, we've seen fights break out on TV <laughs> between Cincinnati and Xavier. So. We understand. So if you had to kind of like sum up your college career, what were the most, some of the most proudest moments you had while you were at Cincinnati? Some of the most proudest moments I take from being at Cincinnati is more um, the people I got a chance to play with and um, get to know and build that, you know, that brotherhood and those relationships that last forever. Um, playing for Coach Hugs. You know, uh, Mick Cronin being the guy that recruited us. Um, the city of Cincinnati, the way they embrace, you know, the Bearcat basketball and make you just, you're not going to feel like, like, you know, you ain't going to get homesick. If you get homesick, it, it's because, you know, you think about home, but the people going to make you try to feel as, as home as possible and make you as comfortable as possible. It, it's, it's a basketball town. It's a college town. Um, when you win in, it's 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 the best place to be. No, I mean it's 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 you know, and I got I got to kind of spin it this. Just give us a Bob Huggins story before, like before you move on, like a funny a story you want us to know about what happened between you and Coach. <laughs> uh shit. Whew. Like a personal story, something you know, something you might tell in the audience. No, I don't, I'm, I'm like coach is my guy. I got he loves me. I I love him. We still got a lot of love for each other. I'm super happy that you know what he did for my brother. You know, bringing DJ in like that, mm-hmm. like shit to me is super dope. Um, my my relationship with hugs it, it went it went different ways. Like you know, like we had our ups and downs. But through it all, like I learned a lot from him. Um, it was just being a freshman, like you know, and him trusting me with with his national championship fucking trophy, pretty much. And that made me have the most up respect for him ever because I was on a team where we had a lot of seniors. We had a lot of guys that was pros. We had a lot of this. We had a lot of that. And he kind of allowed me to run the offense. Like, I didn't have to come down the court and look at him to see what we were running. Um, He let me call things out. We'll come out of timeouts, and he'll ask me what I feel, what I see. And it, it, it 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 was good for me. I learned a lot from him. So now it's NBA draft time. Um, you know, what was that process like for you? You know, what was it like leading up to draft night? And then when you first stepped foot in the NBA, what was what was that like? It was a, 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 a it was a lot of different emotions. Um, you know, hearing that you 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 gonna go here, you gonna go there, and then actually when draft night happens, seeing where you end up going. Um. Then getting in the NBA as far as after that night is over, you really in the NBA as far as like you're associated with the NBA. You know, you know, you're about to find out what it is. Like now, am I getting the contract? Am I am I coming to camp? Am I on guarantee? Am I la la? Like so now you see what the NBA is about. You go to summer league. I got drafted by Dallas. I go play summer league with Dallas the whole summer. By the time we go to um training camp i'm with them and that happened my rookie year so it was it was a a, a, 
I can't even say it was a crazy experience because after summer league, uh, Kiki Vandeweghe was a guy that was kind of helping us out before the draft, and he ended up being the general manager at um with the Denver Nuggets. And he called me and was like, "Hey, I'm one of the first moves I'm gonna make. I'm gonna bring you over from Dallas because he was with Dallas." And he said, I'm going to bring you over from Dallas with me to Denver. How you feel about that? I'm like, I just want to play in the league. They're <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck where I play at. Like, I just want to play in the NBA. And then, um, so what was, so you went from Denver and then you went to? I went to Philly after Denver. Okay. And then I got a chance to play with AI and. Derek Coleman and Aaron McKee and Eric Snow and just like, that was the final. That was the finals team, right? The I think it was the, they went to the finals. I think the year before I got there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Or probably the year after I got. I don't know, either one or before, either the year before, or the year after. And then you spent some. Did you spend some time in Orlando? Uh, no. I went. I went to. Um, I spent a little time with Chicago with the in, in camp, and then I, I, right. I went somewhere else after that. But then right. I spent a bunch of time overseas after that. Overseas, and you enjoyed that experience, I'm sure. I mean, it, it was, it was basketball. Like you know, I, I did enjoy it because you start trying to take it for what it is. Um, and as you get older and you look back on those experiences, like I did enjoy it a lot. One of the better places I even tell some people when they always ask me where I was at, I always tell them Lebanon and they'd be like, how? And it was like, cause some of the people I met. So some of the places it just be the people. So I got to ask you this question. I do an on the spot question every show. So I asked DJ one, you probably saw it. So I want to know two matchups in college that you took personal. So at your position, when you knew you saw this person, it was just personal, right? So the thing that comes with this question is, you're going to say who it is, but it's also going to imply that you're leaving other people out that you didn't see like that, which starts the conversation. Yeah, so who were two match? Who were two matchups that, like in college at Cincinnati, that you were like you that got you got you up for? Not not considered a rivalry per se. That like oh, I'm about to go against him tonight. Right, he's going to get the best out of me. I need two names. You you like, oh, man? We we played. We kind of played that that like that national schedule where like you playing a bunch of top twenty five teams outside your conference, um, but we keep it like in conference. I won't even say it was more like ma- it, it was matchups, but it was more like the teams, like it, like even in the conference, like uh, UNC Charlotte was it. Like, so who was their point guard though? You got to say the name. Who was their point guard? It, they, they, but it, it was, you know how it go. It was, it, they'll put this one. It was that one. Like, you know, like they had, they had, they had good. Like, it was, they had good guards. They had, um, but the guards kind of like changed. You know, like one, one to go from a freshman to a senior. Right. So who was the who was one that was tough though? <sighs> you got to say some names. <laughs> so I get everybody. All right, you know what? I need though? some names. Um. Who was tough for me? Definitely, um, Iceman's son. I can't. I, I cannot remember his first name, but he he played at Houston. Oh, George Gervin's son. Yeah, probably shoot that motherfucker anytime he wanted. Like you, like he ain't running no plays. Like you, you like you can't take like a second off. The average about twenty something in a fucking conference. Like he he was a problem for me. He made me really. You talking about George Gervin Jr.? You talking about uh, yes. George Gervin Jr.? Yes. So you got him. Yes. Now I need one more name. It probably would be um, I can't remember his name. Uh, Diego, from um, am I saying his name correctly? From UNC Charlotte, I had to chase that motherfucker off all them screens. So we'll we'll take those two because you gave us two names. I mean, everybody else that sees this. Might text you later, like I thought I was your matchup. <laughs> but before we before we go, I want to do want to give you a chance to talk about what you're working on off the court now. That you you know you talk about your sons. Like, what do you have going on now that you want to tell the audience about? Uh, right now, I'm I'm back currently doing AAU full time. Actually, back in the area where I'm from, um, we're just trying to put this program back on a national level. 
Uh, we'll be on the the same program I started with, which is cool. Um, going to try to see if we can work it back up the way that, you know, the guy, my man, Artie Green, had it when he did it for us, where he got us, you know, on a national level with the shoe deals and things like that. And just trying to bring talent back out the neighborhood and, and get these guys going to school for free, whether it's Division One or Division Two, and just try to show them a different life. And it's, it's more than the neighborhood. And basketball can do a lot for you, as you can see right now with us guys being on this podcast. 20 something years after we don't know I don't finish playing basketball and, and we're still talking about basketball. Great man, then your son, talk about your son. One, one is on their way to UAB. My my daughter's the oldest, she's at Seton Hall right now. KJ is um on his way to UAB, he's a senior right now. Um, my youngest son is Christopher, he's a freshman. Uh, I'm just happy that they all want to play. Fortunate enough that right now that two of them is Division One players. I got the time right now to work my youngest son as much as I can, and and you know hopefully we can make sure that he can get himself if he wants to to be a Division One player also. That's great to hear, man. So Kenny, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate you being on the show. Um, definitely will get you back sometime. I look forward to meeting you in person soon. I appreciate um, you guys for having me. No problem. So this has been another alumni talk. Uh, definitely, again, follow the ABL, ablballing.com, and then look out for this interview on YouTube as well as Apple Podcasts. We are out. See you next time.